All right, Paul. So we kind of know there's these magnetic fields, and because there's differential rotation of the sun, it causes to move in this 11, well, actually 22 year cycle related to the magnetic field. Now, this is kind of cool, pretty amazing, but you still haven't explained why it's hotter on the outside. Which is, of course, a great enigma because heat should flow from hot to cold, not from cold to hot. But you're going from a temperature of only 6,000 degrees to many millions of degrees over a very short distance. And it's, it still doesn't make sense, even if there are magnetic fields. So what are the possible options here? Now, I have to warn, dear viewer, we're not going to tell you the answers. This is one of the great unsolved mysteries of modern astrophysics. There are basically two theories. Mm -hmm. Now, theory number one is that what's happening is that some sort of magnetic waves are moving out. Now, if we look at the surface of the sun, we can see all this turbulence and convection and things popping in and out like popcorn. And this is shaking things. Maybe it's shaking magnetic waves. And okay. these magnetic waves, magnetic plasma waves, things like alpha and waves, and other complicated things you don't need to go into, would move up. And as they move up, they maybe bring heat with them. Oh, so essentially you're saying that maybe they're carrying this heat towards the surface or the outside. Yes. And normally, of course, heat only goes from hot to cold. So let's imagine we have a magnetic field, okay. and I'm going to hold this end of it, right. this is my red hand here, yep. and I'm going to wave up and down, and this okay. is the magnetic, magnetic plasma wave. So if we do that, what you can see is that as I move it up and down, waves will move along. So this is a bit like some violent thing at the surface of yeah. the sun, shaking the magnetic fields and causing a wave to go up. Now the waves look pretty uniform here. So it's not going to heat anything up. It will move the heat up, but it won't move it very fast. That's right. But now let's imagine that in fact the density goes down as you go up. Okay, and we kind of do know that. Yes, this is actually like cracking a whip. You can move the end of a bullwhip quite slowly, but because the whip gets thinner as it goes down, the end can actually go supersonic. So, all right, so the density changes, but yep. we're moving it with a certain weight. We're cracking that magnetic wave. Yep, so all these turbulent things at the bottom are cracking at the bottom and the magnetic field lines are vibrating and now as you see as you go up the waves get faster and faster. So we're picking up speed as you said like that bull whip as we're coming towards the outside. Yep, so let's show the two of them together to make it clearer. Yep. So now we're looking at a whip that's of uniform thickness which would be yep. like magnetic waves going up into no change in density and then on as the opposed bottom, to one yep. getting thinner which is a bit like the real sun where you're sending magnetic waves up from a dense region to a low density region and so clearly now here we're getting uh, one of the set of waves coming out before the other yeah so for, if it gets thinner it gets faster and faster and faster and so that's one possibility the waves go up into the lower density region and go faster and faster and that's what makes it so hot okay the other possibility is something called reconnection. We already talked about this a bit about how the magnetic field lines join, but here we've got a simulation of what's going on here. We've got some magnetic field loops coming out of some yep. spots, and they can join up, okay. s snap, and then some of it escapes into space, and some of it reconnects in a different geometry. So the snapping is creating this energy or this heat or this temperature. Yes, again, if you do the detailed plasma physics of it, you can find this does generate energy. And most likely it's a combination of these two, something to do with magnetic waves going up and getting faster and faster in the lower density, the, whip, the bull whip effect, or it's some, uh, something to do with this reconnection or some combination of the two. Now, all right, you said there's two possible options, but we don't know which one. So how do we go about solving this? It's been proved to be very hard to work it out from looking out here. But NASA has got a mission, the Parker Solar Probe, which is actually going to fly not quite into the region where it happens, but very close. And the idea is its plasma instruments on board will see the plasma as it flies out past it and determine which of the two is actually the dominant effect and how well it works. And so to get that close, they've actually had to build this probe in a special way to withstand these extreme temperatures. Not millions of degrees, but still over a thousand degrees Celsius. Yes, and so the spacecraft is underway at the moment. It's already dipped a few times close. It's going to get closer and closer over repeated orbits. So we can actually try and work out what's actually driving this incredible heat of the corona of the sun.